What if I told you that you could defeat nearly every enemy in the game with your only source of damage being an item? thing of note, the majority of this footage is in New Game Plus with buffed enemies, not just base early game bosses. Now this item is the Regal Omen Bairn. For 50 FP, you explode for holy damage around you and then release a load of tracking wraith projectiles towards your target for a bunch of holy damage. If you are wondering, a bairn is the Scottish term for a baby that I'm probably entirely mispronouncing, and so it is entirely possible this is actually basically Baby Morgan, the Omen King, that you channel FP into into fire out projectiles. Now, this item is neat, right? It's cool, it's got weird flavor, but it isn't like a weapon or anything, so what use does it really have in the game? Well, while it doesn't have the ability to be upgraded with smithing stones to improve its power, it does actually still scale with stats, specifically B scaling with both intelligence and faith, meaning the higher that your intelligence and faith are, the higher your damage will be while using this. On top of this, there is an armor set in the game that boosts the damage of this item by a total of 20%, the Omen set, which belongs to a man named Dung Eater. So yeah, you have to basically become the Dung Eater to bring this to full effectiveness. I'm sorry. While it doesn't scale with weapon attack power or of anything that you're holding for obvious reasons as it's not your weapon, it's an item, it does, however, get boosted by overall character damage buffs, as well as any boost to holy damage. And so here we have the makings of a build to make a support item, the star of the entire show. Today is not a a build that will one-shot the biggest health enemies. It is not about a build that will overtake the current meta in any way, shape, or form. However, the fact that you can make this item do 4,000 damage a pop, even to enemies that aren't resistant to it if you hit the close range explosion too, without even being at 80 faith and intelligence, because I'm not. The big thing is that the range is sort of absolutely insane. Like, you can cast this item from easily 50 feet away, and it will still reach because of the projectile speed. And on top of that, you can use this while riding torrent as well, becoming a mobile ball of death wraiths. I, I will note now in the footage that you are seeing me chug mana flasks like crazy. For the showcase, I did choose to focus a bit more on the damage stats, but in reality, you want more mana than I'm showing here. I will go over the actual recommended attributes later on if you want to try this yourself later, but let's just have some fun with this for now, okay? In PvP, it is sort of difficult. It has big potential and it also has a super high annoyance factor to your enemies. I mean, just ask this guy who tried to sever himself from the session after running from me for about a minute straight, but then got interrupted by one of the wraiths anyways. Oh, now you fucked up. Now you fucked up. It isn't difficult to avoid being hit by this if you know what you're doing, but it is difficult to do anything but dodge it if the person using it is using it on repeat. You can't get close to them because the initial burst has massive knockback. The armor set has good poise, so you can even take a light attack from someone too if you have to. If the person does get hit by the Wraith Blast, they do pretty good damage as well. Essentially, it comes down to a game of skill on your opponent's part. If they can dodge until you run out of FP, they probably win. If they can't do that, they are screwed. It isn't broken, it isn't consistently destroying, it is just a fun alternative that has a decent win rate as well. And that's without even using a weapon in your hand. Now let's go over how the pieces actually come together and also where to get them. First up, the reusable item itself is traded for with a remembrance after defeating the main boss of Landell, the capital city. The armor set you can technically acquire as early as you reach the capital city as well if you wish to murder an NPC without during the quest line. Otherwise, you will have to wait until you reach the Halig Tree area of the game to finish that NPC's story and get their armor naturally. If you want more information on the quest, check out our video link down below on everything you need to know about the loathsome Dung Eater. Next up, we have our most important talisman to make this function, the Holy Scorpion Charm. This one raises your holy damage by around 12.5%, but at the cost of some damage negation. Yes, this means that things will hurt more, but hey, the armor that buffs this item is actually quite heavy, so that at least that comes with decent base 
base stats as well. On top of this, you want to have any seal of the game really so you can cast incantations. Don't worry about the upgrade level or which specific one it is as our only cast is a buff and those are not affected by scaling. It works at a flat rate. This buff is Golden Vow, buffing your damage by 15% and also reducing damage taken by 10% for 80 seconds. To get it for yourself, head to the east side of Mount Gelmir, specifically the Corpse Sench stack on the end of the pathway reached from that side of the mountain. All of these are your bread and butter standard damage that will in theory affect every cast you make of this item. Everything past here is where we get into fun scenarios and short term burst periods to make you stronger in a boss encounter. I I'd truly recommend America's Source Seal as well. While not a requirement, it boosts three different stats that are super important with this build by five. And if you don't have that, head to the Prayer Room site of Grace in the Halig Tree Mega Dungeon and then slowly climb down the pillars safely to reach the bottom. Progress back to the south corner to find an imp statue door, open it, and find the talisman inside. The wondrous flask of physics set up for this build makes it really shine as well. The two mixtures inside being the Holy Shrouding Crack tier, which boosts holy damage by 20% for three minutes, and then the Cerulean Hidden tier, which eliminates FP consumption for 15 seconds after drinking your flask. This allows you to start one fight for refresh at sight of grace with just 15 seconds of free reign to just straight up spam this otherwise very costly item. Against squishy bosses, this will be enough to kill a good chunk of them, and against healthier foes, it will get a good chunk of the job done right at the start. If you can manage to use this at a time when you know you will not be interrupted, it allows three full blasts back to back. The fourth blast will start the animation, but then the FP is consumed again once the actual wraiths release. Even under heavy dress, you can easily get two free item uses off during this time period. To get these upgrades, first head to the minor air tree on the eastern side of Lyurnia up in the hills and then for the second one, go to the minor air tree in Mount Gelmir, right near the Road of Iniquity site of Grace. The initial pop explosion of this item has great knockback against anything that can be particularly knockbacked, and the armor that you wear to boost the damage has pretty good poise. So anything that is able to be staggered, you should be using this up close to throw them to the floor, even at the risk of taking a hit along the way. This build is dangerous to use. It works, and it can work very well, but it requires you to work to make it do so. It requires effort, as any beautiful thing really should. Another talisman that can make a big difference is the Ritual Sword Talisman, buffing your damage by 10% when you're at full health. While this isn't something that you can comfortably say that you will be taking advantage of permanently, more often than not you will probably be at full health, and especially you will be able to make sure that you're at full health before you choose to pop your Wondrous Physic Flask for 15 seconds of your free damage period, which is of course the most important moment. To get this for yourself, head to the Luck ruins in the Altus Plateau and find the staircase in the back left leading to a boss. Defeat them and receive it for your collection. Then we have the one weapon that we actually have equipped, the Scepter of the All-Knowing. This one is entirely optional as it just adds to the danger factor really. The weapon skill reduces the non-physical resistances of both your enemy and yourself for a short period of time. If your opponent is fully physical damage based, this has pretty much no drawbacks. However, exercise caution using it otherwise. The fourth talisman slot is a bit of a flex slot, though I would probably recommend either the Great Jar's Arsenal or an Aired Tree Talisman. Essentially, the armor set just weighs a ton and it makes you sink a lot of levels into Endurance, so any levels that you can take out of Endurance is more levels that you can put into Faith or Intelligence or Mind to raise your FP to make the damage itself more effective. On which notes, let's talk about the actual attributes themselves. For this one to reach its absolute maximum potential, you need to be a much higher level than even I am myself. Without a Talisman, to assist your weight management, you will need to have 41 endurance. Without context, th that sentence almost sounded like the world's nerdiest fat joke. But realistically, it's just the unfortunate truth about your armor, talisman, seal, and scepter if you still want a medium roll. The amount of endurance, unfortunately, eats up a lot of levels. You definitely want to hit 30 vigor, as that stops most enemies from one-shotting you with non-special attacks. 20 mind is the requirement to cast Omen Baron twice before needing to drink a flask. Strength you want 12 if you plan to use the scepter of the all-knowing skill. Dexterity 18 for the same reason, but don't worry about either of those stats if you aren't using that. Intelligence and Faith are your main damage attributes to boost this, but seeing as you need to pump up both of them nearly equally, it takes a lot of commitment. Ideally, you want to reach 80 in each, as that is the proper soft cap of scaling with these skills, but don't overreach at the detriment of your other attributes. All the damage that you've seen today was done with 60 Intelligence and Faith before counting the Talisman boost, meaning that this still has a fair amount to grow up to level 200 even. And even beyond that, once you consider how much more powerful it gets, every time you gain
gain enough FP to cast one more of these between gulps of mana juice. And all of this for an item, a simple reusable item, the ability to be the linchpin of a build that still scales up well past level 200 with ease. And that's to say nothing of the fact that you could easily just slot in any main hand of your choice as well, maybe something that even scales with intelligence and faith, and then you can make it even higher functioning. But that wasn't what I wanted to do today. I didn't want to make a ridiculously OP perfect build that just uses Omen Baron as a very small part of it. I wanted to show you all just how strong and how comparable to even a genuine weapon. You can make a reusable item if you know what buffs what in Elden Ring. I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been the build where you walk around with a baby in your pocket that you apparently use to make yourself explode with race, and then they hunt down your enemies. Elden Ring makes total sense, okay? Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye